In this video, we will take a look at how to convert our PyQt6 applications that we have made into executables that we can give our users to allow them to easily run our PyQt6 application. To start, I have a small PyQt6 application here with a simple push button as well as a label with a pix map set on it. It also has an icon and all of the images and starter code can be found in the description below. And also note that the icon file has a .ico file extension which is what is usually used for icon files. Make sure to include all of your icons and images in a folder like I've done so here. This will make it easier for us to work with later on. To convert it into an executable, we first need to use a Python package called pyinstaller. To do so, we need to install it using the command pip install pyinstaller. Once we have installed it, we can then open up a terminal here in our code editor. If this isn't an option in your code editor, then you can use your command prompt instead. You will need to copy the path to where your PyQt6 script is at. In this case, it is in my documents and use the cd command to change the directory within your command prompt. We will then need to use the following command, which is pyinstaller followed by our pyqt6 applications python file. In my case, it is main.py. If that doesn't work, try python-m pyinstaller followed by your python script name. In my case, it is main.py. And now it will take a moment for all the files to be created. And once that's done, within our directory, we can see that a folder for build, distribution, and the specification file have all been created. The build folder contains all the code for our application, and the distribution folder contains all the code that has been minified. This is the folder that you will need to send to your users for them to use your application. But before we do so, if we run our application, we can see that there are a few problems. A terminal opens with our application and the icon of our application is also not visible. To fix this, we need to specify a few options in our specification file. Do not have the console appear when the executable is opened. We can change console to a value of false. Besides that, we also need to specify which folder we will need in our application for things such as the Python modules. This is done automatically. But for things such as images, PyInstaller is unable to identify them. So we will need to do it manually. In this case, we will need the images folder. We can specify it by adding it to the data list in our specification file. The syntax for writing the folders we will need is a tuple with the first value as the source, which is where the folder is at now. And the second is the destination, which is where we want the folder to be inside the distribution folder. In our case, we want to use the images folder and within the distribution folder, we want it to be in the images folder as well, so that our application will still be able to use that relative file path. If, for example, you have other folders with resources that your application requires, you can specify it as another tuple in the list. Besides that, we also need to specify which icon our application should use. In my case, I will specify it as images slash application underscore icon dot ICO. This is the icon of our application's executable. Lastly, we can also change the name of our application. This is the name of our executable, which the user will use to open and identify the application by. In my case, I'll name this button app. Now that we have set our specifications of our application, we will need to rerun the command. But this time, we can just use the specification folder that was created in state. So we can use the command pyinstaller main.spec and once again, if this doesn't work, use python-m pyinstaller main.spec. In 
if we now open the distribution folder, we can see that our application with the icon we specified. If we run our application, we can also see that it works as expected. Note that if you want to let your users download this application, you need to give them this entire distribution folder. So you probably want to zip it and ask them to extract it and then to open the executable to launch the application. If instead of that, you want to give your users one executable instead of an entire file, that is possible too. But your application will take longer to start since it needs to create temporary files. If this is the option you want to use, let's first delete the previous files and folders that were created by PyInstaller. Now, before we convert it to an executable, we need to change the path forward images. Since the image files will be stored in temporary files and therefore their path will be different. To do this, we will first import the sys and os module. Since the temporary folder can be found on the sys.meaipss, we will need to use the os module to join it to the image paths like so. Make sure to do this for all of your image files. We will then modify those path names within our application. And then we can run the command pyinstaller dash dash one file, set the option that we want to only convert it to one executable file, and then followed by our Python script name. In this case, mine is called min.py. And once again, if that doesn't work, you can use the command python m pyinstaller dash dash one file main.py. So if we open the distribution folder now, we can see that we only have one executable that we have to distribute to our users. We will also need to use the same configuration that we had previously in the specification file. This includes changing the application icon. adding to the data list and also changing the console value to false. So if we recreate the distribution folder using pyinstaller minus back And we will also delete the previously created application. And now we can see that we have a single application with the icons we specified and it runs as expected. That's about it for this short video. If this video has helped you or if you have enjoyed this video, please consider possibly subscribing or liking this video to help my channel grow.